Well, Stephen, thanks for joining us again. And I believe today you're going to give us a little tour around, uh, a virtual tour of a DR4A1 cockpit. Absolutely. Uh, virtual flight, even. So uh, let's let's get into it. So here we are in the DR401 155 CDI. Now, Ruby and I make um, a number of petrol engine models also, but the uh, CDI is the most popular. So that's this one. The view you're getting is from the camera mounted quite high up and far forward on the, it's mounted on the uh, canopy handle. So you're getting a slightly oblique view of the panel, not quite the same as the pilot has. Now, the first thing you notice when you get into a robot is the visibility, which is exceptional. And you have this huge area of perspex, it extends right the way around. Uh, even the folk in the rear seat have a really nice big window to look for through, but you've also got a, a roof here to keep the sun off. There are no thick pillars, uh, just a vast area of perspex. And the next thing is that the canopy extends here right down to elbow level. So you've also got a really good view out to the side and down to the front and the rear. Now let's just uh, go through a startup procedure since we're starting at the beginning of the flight. So the startup procedure of the uh, CDI is very, very straightforward. I'm just going to move this uh, back slightly to get my hand out of the way. Uh, there we go. And uh, it's just a matter of applying the uh, brake. So you pull up a, a knob there whilst the tow brakes are applied. Uh, then the power lever will be on minimum. The flaps are up. The fuel pump here is going to be switched on. Then it's just battery master on, engine master on. You wait for the glow light to go out, turn the key, and the engine starts immediately, every time, hot or cold, no fuss. Then you can do your post startup checks while the engine warms up. Then it's just a quick fade air check, um, an alternate, whoops, uh, an alternate air check, the alternate air uh, lever is there, and you're ready to go. Now in flight, the, um, the avionics here are all very accessible and they're easily accessible actually right across the panel from either seat. Uh, if you're flying from the right, you've got all the information you need on the G5, it's a nice bright large instrument with a good angle of view and your nav and traffic data is mirrored on the MFD here and the GTN. So you have all the information you need. Uh, the workload is very low indeed. The diesel engine only has one lever. No carburetor heat, no mixture control. That's all handled by the FADEC, uh, as is the pitch of the propeller. So you can really just concentrate on flying the aircraft. The fuel management on the CDI aircraft is also very easy because the tanks are in line. There are no wing tanks to balance. It's a very quiet aircraft because it's got a water-cooled engine. The vibration is very low, partly because of the water cooling, but partly because of the airframe material, which is really good for absorbing uh, uh, vibration. And it, the engine has a really efficient silencer. And the three-blade scimitar propeller is also very quiet. So it's a very comfortable uh, environment to be in, helped by uh, nicely contoured, well-upholstered seats here, and plenty of headroom. Uh, I'm looking down slightly here, but you can see I'm very nearly six foot, just a half centimeter off. And you can see I've got plenty of headroom here, uh, but for really tall people with long torsos, we can uh, gain another nine centimeters of headroom. So we can incorporate people of pretty much any size. So there you have it. It's, it's uh, an aircraft that's super nice to fly. It's quiet, it's comfortable. You're in and out of short grass fields and you, you can fly down to the Mediterranean islands in an easy day. That's great, really impressive. And I've forgotten the great view in the, in the Roban. Um, thank you very much, Steve. Well, thank you, Ian. Thanks for having me along. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, please give us a like, leave a comment and subscribe.